Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the cognitive approach to explaining depression. Make sure you're familiar with the characteristics of depression before you move on to this lesson. So first of all, we're going to be looking at the ABC model and Beck's cognitive theory. We're going to be looking at applying these models and then looking at the evaluation, so the strengths and the weaknesses of it. So we're going to be looking at two models, Ellis's ABC model and Beck's negative triad, as I said. But first of all, you need to be clear that cognitive psychologists are most concerned with how irrational thinking leads to depression. So we're very much talking about irrational thinking and our thoughts. Make sure you keep that in mind when we go through the PowerPoint. So first of all, Ellis's ABC model. He suggested that depression is to do with the rational thoughts as previously stated but also that it interferes specifically with us being happy and he said there are three steps that happen the first one is an activating event so anyone might have an activating event it could be what might seem minor to some people but larger to other people an activating event could be the end of year exams it could be um, a family member dying it could be um, a, a loss of a pet anything at all it doesn't really matter um, but there's an activating event of some kind i'm going to use the example in this case of a family member dying unexpectedly and this leads to a belief now, you can have a positive or a negative belief, but someone with depression will have a negative belief. So someone with a positive belief is not obviously going to be happy that their family member has died unexpectedly, but they might be accepting of it. They might be able to move on with it at some point. So they might feel very sad and very low, but in the end, they know that there's nothing that could have been done about it and that they have to move on with their life. However, someone with depression might think, as an example, that it's their fault that the person died or that they should have been there for them um, when, when it happened and that they would have been able to stop it, for example. And these beliefs lead to different consequences. If you're rational, it leads to a healthy consequence, such as moving on with your life and like doing the best that you can in light of the situation. But someone with an irrational belief will lead to an unhealthy consequence. And that unhealthy consequence is always, in the case of depression, depression. So some, the consequence of having this negative thought is that you will develop depression. And that's really important. Make sure in your consequence, when you're referring to an example of depression, the consequence is always depression itself. So you can see that Ellis's ABC model isn't just about explaining depression, but also about explaining how rash, um, I guess rational or normal, like normal people would respond to a situation. So make sure when you're phrasing this for an exam question, you're clear whether you're referring to someone rational or, un, uh, or irrational. So are you talking about an irrational belief or a rational belief? Are you talking about a rational consequence or an irrational consequence? The activating event is neither of those, it's just neutral. Beck's negative triad came out very soon after this and it's similar. It says that some people are vulnerable to depression over others. And this is because a person's cognitions, the way that they think, creates a vulnerability. And there's three parts to this. The first is your faulty information processing. And Beck said that we attend to or focus on things that are negative and ignore the positives if we have depression. So we tend to focus on particular things that are going wrong in our lives rather than the things that are going well. And some people call this black and white thinking. So um, if the computer breaks and it doesn't work that day and you don't get as much work done as you meant to, it ruins the whole day for that person. Like you can't move on from it. It's made the whole week worse and you just can't get over it. It's black and white. It's been a rubbish day because of that. Even if you could have got 10 nice emails or a nice message from a friend, nothing will change the way you think about that day. It's very negative. And then we also have a negative self schema. Now, when we're talking about a schema, we're talking about mental processes in our brains. Remember to go back over um, what a schema is by looking at your notes on the cognitive approach. But it's basically a mental framework for interpreting information. And a self schema is the information that we have about ourselves. And people with depression have a negative self schema. So they think all the things about themselves are negative. 
they that might be the way that they look the way they speak their personality the way they cope with things they think about these in a very negative way so they might not like the way they look or they might not like the way that they speak or they might not like the way that they think and therefore we always think everything about ourselves is rubbish i'm not very good at this rather than seeing the positives of yourself and that doesn't mean you have to be self-centered it's not all about you but it's about recognizing what you are good at actually i'm really good at swimming for example and that's a real skill of mine or i'm really good at making people feel better when they're down and the final th final thing is the negative triad and this is three things the negative triad is a way of negatively thinking about things and people who have depression have a negative view of themselves the world and the future i'll explain this on the next slide so the negative view of ourselves we think of ourselves as worthless and inadequate so as an example here i'm plain and i'm desirable no one likes me no one could ever love me and this makes us feel worse because we're thinking in our head that we're not great, that we're a bit rubbish, that we're boring, that we don't look nice. And that makes people feel low and they have low self-esteem. So if you can think that someone who has depression is suffering from these negative thoughts about themselves over and over in their head, that's just constantly going around in their head, you can see that one, you would be very tired and exhausted. And two, you can see why people have low self-esteem. They feel sadness. They don't feel worth anything. And then they also have a negative view of the world, like we've said before here, like, I can't understand why pe other people don't like me. Like, even my boyfriend left me. You just think everything about the world is negative. And therefore, it creates this impression that there is no hope anywhere. The whole world is doomed. There's no point trying. And finally, the negative view of the future. So you don't people with depression often don't seek challenges or seek um say a promotion in a job because they don't believe that it's worth going for last time it didn't work or i'm going to be on my own forever nothing is going to change this and that makes you feel more hope like helpless and it just enhances your depression so make sure you're clear on these two things. They are very similar, Ellis and Beck model, but make sure that you are confident on both and also that you remember which is which. So Ellis is the ABC model and Beck's is the negative triad. You could be asked to refer to either of these without them saying Beck's negative triad or Ellis's ABC model. So make sure you're confident in which one is which. So there are some clear practical applications and this is that has, led, that has led to the development of CBT, which we'll be learning about in our next video. But briefly, it's just the idea that we can change our faulty thoughts and it's called cognitive behavioural therapy. Beck's theory formed the basis of this, but Ellis's theory led to a successful reversion of this, which is called REBT. And that challenges your negative irrational beliefs about the person themselves. And therefore, this is obviously a strength because it's a successful therapy. It's used across the NHS. So if you went to your doctor, this is the most likely form of therapy that you're going to receive via the NHS. It's also quite cost effective and it's also successful. There is very high success rates for people who participate in it effectively. Other strengths and weaknesses? A strength is that it's a good thing because it gives the clients the power to change the way they are. So the cognitive approach suggests that actually you just need to change your thinking and then you know what, you could be OK and you could never feel like this again. And that's quite empowering rather than assuming it's because it's of a genetic explanation. So your mum had it, that means you'll have it. It suggests that we have the power to change. But there's also disadvantages to this because it might mean that we are not considering our family circumstances or our life circumstances because it's all about you and you changing. Whereas actually it could be about the family environment that you're in that's causing you to be this stressed. Also, both explanations cannot explain all symptoms of depression. Some patients are deeply angry and some can even suffer from hallucinations and occasionally Cotard syndrome, which is delusions that they are zombies. This is very unusual, obviously, but it is still the case. And it cannot explain why some people who have depression also suffer from these other um, symptoms as well. 
because it's obviously not just their thoughts. However, there's a range of supporting evidence which shows that faulty information processing is present in people with depression and that they do have negative self schemas. Um, and this is useful because it shows that it's likely to be explaining um, the theories and accurate, ex these theories are accurate explanations of depression. However, it suggests that not all irrational beliefs are irrational. They might see, simply seem irrational. And an example of this was found when some researchers gave depressed people more accurate estimates of the likelihood of a disaster than non-depressed people. So some people were more effective, people who had depression were more effective at giving accurate estimates for some negative things that were happening. So they might not be irrational thoughts. And therefore, they might just be realists. And sometimes it's useful to have realists, although most of us prefer to see things through rose tinted glasses. And this therefore questions the validity of Ellis's model, because are they really seeing a rash? Are they really irrational thoughts or are they rational? It's just the rest of us don't want to see them. Thank you for listening again.